This is Deems Taylor offering a few explanatory remarks about Haydn's farewell symphony. In the time when Haydn lived, it was customary for a composer to earn his living by working for a royal family or a member of the nobility. This may seem a little odd to us now, but it will seem less surprising if we remember that Haydn was born in the same year, 1732, as another famous man in a different part of the world, George Washington. One lived to lead a political revolution and become known as the father of his country, the other to do some revolutionary things in music and become known as the father of the symphony. Haydn's special patron was the Hungarian Prince Esterhazy. He lived in Vienna most of the year, but during the summer months his whole household, including the orchestra and Haydn, moved to his country estate in Hungary. The days were spent in hunting and the evenings in eating, drinking and listening to music, some of it written during the same day. This farewell symphony, and by the way, it's four years older than the United States since it was written in 1772, was composed not only for a certain occasion, but for a particular purpose. While there was room on the Esterhazy estate for hundreds of guests, attendants, and servants of all kinds, there was no room for the musicians' wives or families. During this particular summer of 72, the weather was unusually fine, so that the prince postponed his return to Vienna once and then a second time. Well, since there wasn't anything the musicians could do in the way of a formal complaint, Haydn did the next best thing. He made some music to tell the prince how the men felt. Having been ordered to write a symphony for one of the prince's musical evenings, he worked his grievance into the music. As with most of the classic symphonies, there are four movements. The usual fast opening one, then a slow movement, and then a minuet. But instead of finishing off with the usual light fourth movement, Haydn begins this one very dramatically, as though he were trying to compel the listener's attention. Then he stops for a moment and begins a slow pleading section. It must have been a daring and rather tense moment when first one member of the orchestra and then another blew out the candle on his music stand and left the stage until finally only two lonely violins were left at the end. And I might add that the prince got the point, and a few days later everybody went back to Vienna. It's fairly simple, listening to this music, to understand how a symphony was written in Haydn's time. The opening idea is taken from the basic chord of the key of the symphony, that is, a chord of F-sharp minor. As Haydn uses it, it sounds like this. In his treatment of this idea, Haydn uses certain standard musical devices, such as dynamic contrast, meaning that it's first played loudly and then softly. Another device is changing from major to minor and back again, and then shifts of register from high to low. For contrast, Haydn introduces a very different idea, more tuneful and quieter. And so, in this one compact little movement, you hear the basic elements of what musicians call sonata form. In the second movement, the violins play with mutes, which accounts for the different tone quality of the strings. This movement also has several contrasting themes. The first... is followed by two shorter ones. One is in a sort of clipped, unbalanced rhythm, while the other combines the melodic character of the first with the rhythm of the second. In the third movement, Haydn uses another basic musical form, uh, what is called minuet and trio, although you could hardly dance a minuet to the lively, rather humorous idea that Haydn begins with. The more relaxed trio, that is the second part of the minuet, opens with a horn duet. And then, as is customary in this form, the minuet is repeated. In the famous final movement, the opening suggests the mood of the symphony's beginning. In fact, it too is based on that F-sharp chord, though the outline this time, instead of being down, is up. 
The contrasting theme is brilliantly worked up, just as if this were all that Haydn had on his mind. But suddenly there's a pause, and the music comes back to a very slow tempo. It almost seems to say, please listen to what we're asking of you. Do you understand how we feel? Can you hear the post horn? Now, doesn't that suggest anything to you? A journey, perhaps? As each of the instruments drops out, the music becomes more and more plaintive and beseeching, until finally it dies away completely. And now you hear Haydn's Farewell Symphony, directed by Erich Leinsdorf. <laughs>